Welcome to our second video tutorial in the textbook. This video tutorial is going to cover InDesign and its essential workspace. So once you have created your new document, this is what you should see. This is the basic layout. So right in front of you, the black box that has a purple pinkish box on the inside, that is called your artboard. Whenever you're creating any designs, any any drawings, painting anything, putting a picture, putting any shapes onto the artboard, that object will actually be in print if it's inside of the black border. Anything outside the black border will not actually be printed. This is nice because if you want to try and tweak something, you can have it on the side, or if you wanted to mimic something, you can put import the original image on the right side and then try and recreate it within the borders. Next I want you guys to turn your attention to the to the ruler. You have the ruler up top and at the bottom that shows how long and how wide your artboard is. Right now my units and increments are set at inches so you can see that my artboard is eight and a half inches wide by eleven inches long. It's a typical piece of paper. This is important to keep in keep in mind because when you're designing something and if your artboard is really tiny the design is actually going to be too small or the artboard could end up being very very large and your image your design could become way too large above the artboard and the ruler is the title of the document in this case it says untitled 7 it's because I have not saved the document yet it's a new document every time you open up a new document it's going to say untitled so if you open up one document entitled 1 two documents, Untitled 1, Untitled 2, and so on. Next to it you have the at sign, followed by a percentage. That percentage shows you how zoomed in you are on the actual document. So in this case, the page view is at 91%. I can zoom in to 100, up to 100, 400%. You can go a lot higher than that. You can also zoom out. Again, please be sure you're keeping track of how zoomed in you are and actually making sure that the artboard is the correct size. All right, from there, we're going to move to the left side of the screen. On the left side is the toolbar. This is where the majority of the tools you're going to use are stored. The toolbar is broken up into different sections. The tools are grouped together. makes it really easy if you forget what a tool is or if you need to figure out um, what, set of group, what group of tools you need to use. So the top, you have the selection tool. You have selection tool, direct selection tool. Then below that, you have the type tool followed by the different drawing tools like the line tool, pen tool, and pencil tool. Below that, you have the shape tools, which is the rectangle frame tool and the rectangle tool. Then you have the free transform tools under that, which is scissors, free transform, gradient swatch, and gradient feather. Then on the bottom, you have the fill and the stroke. In a different tutorial, I will cover how to use those. Now, if we shift over to the right side, we will come up to the panels box. The panels covers pages, layers, links, stroke, color, gradient, and swatches. Again, in a, in a later tutorial, I will go into more detail and walk you through how to use each of these different tools. These double arrows, both on the right side and on the left side, you can expand the panels. So once you actually click on that, you can open up from the icons and you can see what actually is going on. So you have the links, the layers, and the pages. In the middle, you have the color. You have the CMYK scale. You also have the stroke, the weight, meter limit. You can align the stroke, which type of stroke it is, where it starts, where it ends, the gap color. Then at the bottom, you have swatches, which is just some very, very similar to color, and you have gradient. Again, I'm going to go into more detail on how to use each of these tools and the palette panels, excuse me, in a different tutorial. So that is the basic layout of InDesign Work Essentials.